All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over a story titled, What My Wife Did During Our Separation Makes Me Want to Make It Permanent. And guys, this is definitely one of these stories that's going to make your blood boil. So if you happen to be watching this story when you're at home, maybe watching this on your TV, I would recommend moving any objects that, you, that are heavy that you could throw at the TV away from your reach because you're probably going to do this when you hear about this guy's wife and when she, the kind of crap she pulls on him. Guys, this is a story about a guy. He is 37 and she is 35. And let's just say things obviously weren't working out with he and the missus. And without a shot of a doubt because of her actions... They do the trial separation thing, and you're going to see here in this story how pretty much it was supposed to be she's going to therapy to work on herself, he's going to therapy to work on uh, himself, and there wasn't supposed to be any uh, involvement with any other people. She wasn't supposed to date, he wasn't supposed to date. But then you're going to see here, lo and behold, when this guy thought they, everything was okay, well, it wasn't exactly the case with her. She wasn't exactly sticking by the rules that she set. And this is going to go down this whole path with him and her. And ultimately, guys, you're going to see, like in the title, he wants to make the the, uh, the separation permanent. And take a wild guess who's begging and crying for him to stay with her and all that. And this is definitely a story, guys, of a gal who definitely is just a never-ending roller coaster of her trying to mind F him. No joke. And I'm sure some of you guys out there have been in relationships, or maybe marriages, unfortunately, where it was always just... One thing or, or one thing or another with the gal you're with, okay? She's always saying this, saying that, and doing this, doing that, and it's making you crazy because she's saying one thing, doing another, blah, blah, blah. And this will definitely motivate a lot of you guys, not only to not get married one day, but this is going to make some of you question even relationships with this lady. So, I'm going to get into it here. He says, my wife and I have been married for six years. We have no children, <laughs> thank the Lord. Uh, last July, tensions were high between us. I'm an essential worker. I work the night shift and sleep during the day while she's at work. She was working from home due to COVID and was very loud. She kept waking me up and making me a very crabby person. So I was adamantly very short with her and she was not accommodating to me at all. This sounds like a very common situation last summer in 2020 when most a lot of people were working from home and they're on two different schedules. So she ought to be obviously trying to accommodate him because he works at night and sleeps during the daytime. But she doesn't care, right? I mean, if she gave a crap, she would have kept quiet. And obviously, a lot of people that are used to going about their daily lives, when they're stuck together in the house all the time, there was a lot of conflict. I mean, divorces were going through the roof. In uh, Divorce filings were going through the roof last in May, in the spring of 2020 and 2021. It's no surprise. But you can tell already... She's obviously a total a-hole. And I wonder, she, she was obviously like this before they even got together. Uh, as a result, the time we did have together was very tense between us. It's normally a very happy time. But we weren't able to enjoy it at all because of her actions. We made the decision to do a trial separation, both go to therapy separately, and try to do couples therapy after a few months. <clears throat> we made that decision or she made that decision or you made that decision. I'd like to know that a little deeper there. As my company was frontline, they offered to put us up in a hotel so as to not risk our families. So I took advantage of this and moved out. I asked my wife for the ground rules. Why are you asking her for the rules? This sounds like a sitcom TV guy where he's asking his wife what, what to do, the rules, all that, how to set, set things. No. No. At the very least, it can be equal. But or, but honestly, it should be you setting the rules here. I mean, come on here. But the fact that you're asking her for the rules, this, this tells me a little bit about this guy. And obviously how the marriage, she wears the pants of the relationship. And that's never a good thing on many levels. <clears throat> My exact wording was, so that I understand this, are we seeing other people during this time? Translation, he just wanted to establish this. We're separated. I, you know, what's your mindset here? She angrily replied, this is her saying this, if that's the first place your mind goes, then maybe it's not even worth it, exclamation point. I want to save our marriage, not give you an opportunity to go screw around. I apologized and assured her that I only wanted to understand where we stood. Now, remember her, this is what she's saying here, guys. This is going to come back, and this is very important. Why, remember her throwing a little hissy fit and getting mad at him for just wanting to make sure we're not, you know, 
this is supposed to be just us. We're not dating other people. So she's made it clear, and I'm trying to make this clear. It's supposed to be just them. Well, I'll wait till you see what happens next. So over the past year, <clears throat> I've been to therapy. I talked to my boss and got my shift at work changed to the day shift because I realized that the night shift, the night shift was really taking a toll on my mental health. I learned to be firm, but open and communi communicate and not bottle things up. I honestly feel so much better about myself as a person. Well, that's good. I mean, he's going to individual therapy to work on a bunch of things, but it's good he's working on himself. So it does really help some people. I know a number of people have done therapy and it does help them. My wife and I started couples counseling at the beginning of this year. And it's been, and it's been really great for us. So you think. We both were open about what, what was wrong, both recognized the faults that we had, and both committed to wanting to make things better. Again, pay attention to the both committed to wanting to make things better. Well, you, sir, are trying, you are committed to making things work better, but uh, your, your, your quote unquote better half, well, we'll see. We made the decision to move me back, to move me, move me back in next month and bring the separation to an end. Again, we, we made the decision to move me back. Sounds to me a lot like she makes the decisions, dude. During our most recent th session, our counselor asked if I had completely broken off any relationships that I had during our separation. I replied, I didn't have any relationships during our separation. We established ground rules that this wasn't about having fun with other people. It was about getting better for our relationship to survive. You all remember that part. And this guy obviously stuck by that. My wife replied, we never established that as ground rules. I'm sure they were hearing crickets at that moment when she said that. Because that guy was probably thinking, wait a second. I remember this whole drama when you gave me a hard time because I was questioning about that. And you made it clear, we're not going to date other people. We're working on our marriage. But she's now saying, we never established that as a ground rule. Ha, huh, imagine that. I quoted her words back to her and she responded, well, I was letting you know that shouldn't be your main focus. I mean, if if you were just going to go fool around with random women and try not to improve yourself, then there was no point to trying to save things. So here we go with the twisting things around and the gaslighting and all. I responded, so you were using weasel words to have things both ways? Did you date anyone? She unashamedly say, stated that she had slept with seven men during the past year, that it was perfectly allowed, and I was free to be with someone else if I chose. Unbelievable. The, you, you heard earlier, guys, when I read her thing twice about what she she, 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 she freaked out and yelled at him and the whole thing, and obviously may have to be, no, we're not going to be dating anybody else. But now she's like, hey, that's not what we said. I, I know, yeah, I was effing seven different dudes, you know, a, a different guy every month or so every month and a half, to keep me company while we're supposed to be working on ourselves, working on our marriage. <clears throat> she stated that if I uh, didn't want... If, she stated that if I didn't want it, it should have been clearly stated. I countered that when I tried to approach it, she got angry and shut the subject down. And now she is trying to rewrite history. What I tell you about her constantly changing stories around, mixing things up, saying one thing, doing another, completely mind-effing this guy. Does this sound like an ideal situation for you single guys that never been married yet or that don't do relationships? Does this sound like an ideal situation? Well, remember these things and these stories I do and these examples I give the next time you want to think about moving in with your girlfriend, getting a serious relationship, or even getting married. Does this mean they're all this way? Absolutely not. But there are a hell of a lot of them out there, and you don't need this. I told her at this point I need to think if I want to move in again or even try it anymore because it's clear she treated the last year as a free pass to sleep around on me. She says that I need to grow up and get over it. Whew. Oh my God. It's over. That's it. We're done. Divorce. Goodbye. I responded, see, that's where you're wrong. I don't need to do either of those things. I just need to get over you. And after that, I feel like that's going to be it. the easiest thing for me to do. You're damn right. She's a freaking low life. She sabotaged the marriage. Let's be honest here. He was working nights, did what he had to do because it was, you know, during that time. And uh, he couldn't sleep because she was making all this noise during the daytime. No respect there. He moved out, tried to work in the marriage. Meanwhile, she made him feel like crap. 
about the whole, he brought up the whole, uh, are we seeing other people thing, made it feel like crap. And now she's been doing dudes for well, seven dudes in a year. There's probably more. You know, the old joke about when you ask a gal how many, how many guys she's been with, whatever that number is, multiply it times three, ask a guy and divide it by three. So if she's saying seven, it's probably about 20. Probably. Unbelievable. Walk away. Divorce. It's over. He says, am I making too much of this? No. I feel like I've made so much progress in therapy, and I know she has too. But I just feel disgusted every time I look at her. I feel like she cheated on me, and I get so angry. She did cheat on you. Many times. And, and more than seven times, I might add. I don't know if there's any way to move forward with her. She keeps saying she did everything right and need, and need to stop trying to punish her because I didn't explore while I could. No. She's completely twisting things around, twisting your words, twisting what happened, all that stuff. Again, you're there because of her, because she was being a complete a-hole and just causing all problems in the marriage, probably because she wanted to sabotage. That, that's what I'm thinking. She, she wasn't happy, didn't want a divorce, so she made things miserable. You moved out, free pass to go hook up with other dudes, and uh, now she's like, okay, I got my roll in the hay, 20 times in my opinion, not seven. And, uh, oh, well, you're the bad guy. No, you should not feel bad about this. You're not making too much of this. She, you can't trust her. She's a liar. She's de deceitful. And, and, and trust is a uh, cornerstone of any relationship, let alone if you're going to be married. And now she's making out to be the bad guy. So absolutely not. And she's going to keep twisting it around, twisting it around. So, he also says, uh, would I be the worst person in the world for filing for divorce at this point? Absolutely not. I feel like I'm close to this situation. I can't think straight. What the hell do I do even at this point? I've been working for a year to try to fix my marriage, and I thought she was too. Now I feel like we've been working on the opposing teams. She doesn't care about you, and she doesn't care about the marriage, okay? She used as a free pass to go hook up with other women, other dudes. Well, maybe there were some other women too. You never know. Meanwhile, you were working on yourself, working on the marriage, trying to be a better person, and didn't hook up with any women. You could have done it, obviously. So, no, it's over. Move on, okay? I mean, I know it sucks. I know you want to believe she's the, the girl the girl you fell in love with, but the girl you fell in love with, obviously, is a different person, and this this woman is trash. And you're not going to get over this, and you're not going to... She doesn't care about you. And the fact that she's like, well, you could have gone and slept with other women. Do you really want to be married to some gal that just so easily can say, oh, you can go hook up with other women if it makes things better for you? Because no woman that truly loves their guy is going to do this, by the way, let alone want you to hook up with other women. Not at all. Now, he has an update. And this is where things definitely get entertaining. He says, an update. I've gotten a few requests for updates, and I think as much as I'm embarrassed of this whole thing, I think, it, <clears throat> I think it helps to get it out of my chest. And he says, big letters in the first sentence, we're getting divorced. Good, bro, because you together is just a disaster. Shortly after the big revelation, our counselor asked to speak to me one-on-one -on, -one on this. She told me, you need to walk away for your own health. You've made so much progress and so many positive changes, this won't work unless both of you are trying and Tina is not trying. This can't, be, can't all be on you because she kept dragging you back down. She told me that she was crossing a line by telling me what to do, but she literally could not sleep after finishing up our session and seeing the look on my face. Now, I don't know the law here, but I have to wonder whether it's eth ethical for the therapist to be saying he should do this with her not there or something like that. I mean, I don't care that she's doing this, but I have to wonder about that. And she's absolutely right. He needs to walk away and end it. Everything the counselor says is dead on. And normally the counselors are trying to make marriages work. When I thought about it, she's right. I've been using this time to become a better, more rounded person while my wife has been using as a free pass to act like a teenager and has kept up the deceitful gaslighting behaviors that plagued our marriage for far too long. So obviously this was going on before things really got bad. You see what happens, guys, when you pretty much take what you can get when it comes to the relationship department? When you're a guy that obviously uh, is, has a lot going on for yourself and you're doing well and you're high value, if you will, high status, you don't settle for just 
any ra- if you want to do relationships, you're not going to just settle for any random chick just figuring like, ah, oh, this is the best I can get. No, you're going to want the best of the best on, on many fronts, but also in terms of treatment and all that. This guy, I, there's no way, this, this is who she is. And either she hit it really well or she already, elements were there about her, but he looked the other way because he probably figured, oh, you know, this is as good as I can get. I want to settle. I want to be married, have a family, have kids, which a lot of guys do. When I told her it was over, she broke down sobbing. She begged me not to leave, told me that I could have a free pass to go do whatever I wanted to get even with her, and swore that if it's been clear, she never would have touched another man. What a load of crap. And right there, again, you're free to go. Please stay. You can do do whatever you want. Go hook up with other women to get even with me. What kind of relationship or marriage is going to be a situation where she's go off and hook up with other women just to get even with me? That, that's her mindset here. And the fact that he said that she was breaking down crying, the crocodile tears, total 180, and begging him not to leave. Meanwhile, she was one bitching at him in the uh, therapist's office just the day before. I have to admit, I felt myself wanting to say yes. Smack. But but for a second, she was the woman I fell in love with again. But it was just a second that I knew it would end. And we'd go back to walking on eggshells and playing head games soon enough. Yes, you you could stay, and and I guarantee you, within probably a day, she'd be back to the same BS again. She cheated on you, okay? She completely lied to you, messed things up with your head, and uses as a free pass while you're trying to work on the marriage to hook up with other dudes. What does this say about her character and who she is? You cannot trust her, and no marriage can function without trust. <clears throat> I told her that we both deserve better than the people we have been to each other, and the fact that she thought I wanted revenge and still blamed me for her actions told me she hadn't learned to be any better. No, and she's never going to change. And this, you'll be dealing with this misery the rest of your life. Does it sound appealing? No, get out of there. She told me she'd do anything to make it work and asked what I wanted to see from her. Well, I'd have a little fun at this point. I'd be like, you know, you can, uh, you can cook me all this food. You can uh, scrub the floor on your hands and knees like Cinderella. You can do all that crazy, freaky shit in the bedroom that I always wanted that you never do. Then I'd kick her ass to the curb. Of course, then she would, could bring you up on charges or something, so that's not a good idea. No, you walk. I told her that I'd seen everything I need from her, and she could only be better when divorce beca- became a reality, and she hasn't made the progress I believe she had before the sessions. I served with papers, and I'm moving forward with a divorce. Awesome. Hallelujah. She asked me to please resume counseling sessions, but I refused. What the hell for? So you can put up a big show in front of the therapist and, and then get in. See, she obviously thinks this guy is the same guy as he was before and she can, you know, get things by him. But obviously he's a lot of, done a lot of uh, self-improvement and growth in that year apart in the therapy and all that. And this guy's growing a pair, thank the Lord, because obviously this guy didn't grow a pair before him. And she walked all over him. I know it's the right decision, but I feel very conflicted. There's something inside me that feels... Like I'm doing wrong, even though I know it's the only way I'll eventually be. So that is into it, that is the end of his story here. But yes, he's walking away. He's divorcing it, and the the conflicted feelings that's understandable. You can't be with somebody that long and then just think and just switch it off. Okay, no matter what someone does. And there's the thought about oh, when she was crying, I saw the girl I fell in love with. You know, but that was a big act. It is a whole big act with her. Just a never-ending BS. And again, does this guy really want his life to be like this? But again, if you are someone that doesn't have a whole lot going on for you, or you know, you're going to accept a bunch of BS that you normally wouldn't take if you were doing very well. <clears throat> again, as well, many, many reasons I, I push for you guys to work hard on yourselves and be the best you can be on so many levels in your life, because then you won't tolerate BS from anybody. Not just a romantic partner, girlfriend, fiance, wife, if. You go down that path. But anything. You wouldn't take any crap from members of your family, your friendship circle, uh, business partners, clients, customers, you name it. Anybody. Because it just, just tears you apart as a man, enduring a bunch of BS because feeling like that's all you, 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 you're you worth or all you, you can get. You know, I'm willing to bet you that this guy probably wouldn't have gotten with her if he obviously was done better for himself like he's been doing in the last year. So absolutely, it wasn't a mistake. It was great that he ended it with her. Good for him. And I would just walk away and that is it. At this point, I'd go back to that hotel that the company was paying for that he could stay because he was an essential worker. 
And I would contact the lawyer, and I'd have all communication with his, with his uh, wife here through the lawyer. And or if he has to talk to her through text or email, some kind of thing. There's proof of the contact because, given the way she was completely mind effing him, what tells me about her is the second she realizes it's over, she's going to try to make his life a living hell. Okay, and she can make up a whole bunch of stuff that he could say if they were having a conversation with each other and there was no witness or if there wasn't it wasn't documented through text or email or something like that. So I wouldn't talk to her anymore. And this guy, the way she descri- he describes her in this whole story, she's going to probably, like I said, try to hammer him in the divorce process. So if I were him, I would be doing, uh, even though he's probably going to get hammered in the divorce process, it says they've been married for six years. I know some states are different. Like once it's five years, then that's it. Then she can certainly get alimony or this, this, and this. Every place is different. It's worth it. It's worth her getting half. It's worth him having to pay an alimony for a while just to get rid of her and out of his life. I mean, I think it said he's 36 years old. So in my opinion, that's young. So he's got plenty of time to get his life together and he'll be all right. Because guys, we can we're, we can get a clean slate. We can start over. We don't need to have these giant houses to live in to be happy. It's generally the women that want these big houses to, for, for the kids and the obviously to show off to their friends. We don't need to have these expensive vacations. Guys can live cheap. Most guys. Unless you have an issue like you need to have this internal issue that you need to show off to the world to make people think you got money even though you don't and i know some people like that we can live pretty cheap and be happy but as long as we have our freedom we call the shots in our lives and that's what this guy can do and any of you guys watching this now that's in a bad marriage like this or just somehow and feel like you're trapped you can get out of it you just have to be willing to rip the band-aid off go through the pain in the short term and start over <clears throat> and you can do it we all have that ability guys you just don't give up but living like this, with this disrespect, it will just it just destroys your soul being just treated like this and feel like there's no way out. Now, real quick, I have a few comments I want to read because these are always fun. Uh, one guy says, she opened her legs for seven men while you were trying to better yourself and make the marriage last. And on top of all that, she tried to blame you. F her. I'm glad you're getting a divorce. Amen. Another guy says, you did the right thing. When someone goes out of their way to do whatever they want to do and then lies and gaslights about it, it's time to walk away. In all honesty, she used the time apart to get even more wild and do whatever she wanted instead of working on being better. That's exactly what happened. She is not the one. Divorce is hard. Now go work on yourself and get better. Work harder. Make more of yourself. And so that looking back, you will see how much you have grown. This guy really has grown, obviously, in the last year because of the therapy and working on himself. And so now he's in a position to walk away and start anew. Another guy says, uh, the, ro- the part inside you f- that feels that you're doing something wrong is there because he doesn't want to face the grief of the death of the relationship. Breaking up slash divorce sucks. There is happiness to be found in it. But there's also sadness and fear what the future bring is unknown. You are doing what is best for you and you'll be more have more confidence as the time passes. Right. You feel the death of the relationship, all that, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? You'll be fine. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know your opinion on this. Any guys have been in a situation like this with just the never-ending roller coaster of mind effing by your girl? I'd like to hear about it. And I'm sure many of you guys said that's it. You're done. And, of course, guys, if you come across a great story you'd like to share with me, by all means, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Um, Send me an article, send me a story. If you got a personal story, something that you've been through, a hardship or something that you, you've been through, you've overcome, send it to me. Just make sure it's well written. Just please, guys, a lot of guys just jam everything together. I don't have time to just break it all apart. You, you got to make it, you write it in a way, like I said many times before, in a way that if you were reading it, it'd make it easy for you to read on camera, okay? And uh, send it over to me. And if I don't get to it right away, give me time, I'll get to it. I mean, I did a video yesterday that was very popular. And that guy sent to me his story weeks ago. So just send me a story, be patient, I'll get to it when I can, if it works for the channel. Okay, if it's something that just absolutely doesn't work, then I'm not going to do it, you know, but just, and it doesn't make a difference if it's long, because it seems here a lot of guys like long, good stories to listen to on their drive or at the gym or doing what they do. So, and uh, be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.